Okay, so exercise 31. I'll go ahead and demarcate that here. So I took a couple of liberties to uh, expedite things to go a little faster. Um, so you've got, you see I have my setup here, my four fundamentals. Uh, from the bottom of the piece of paper to the horizon line, eye level, that's seven and a half inches up. So seven and a half inches up and demarcate across. And then of course the center of vision is directly in the middle on this one. Um, and that's 24 inches, so half of that is 12. And then from the center point down to my station point, which is barely in the camera there, that's six and a half inches. Then of course I set my cone in, 30 and 30, and then worked with my compass. So you should, should be clear on that. So catch up on that, pause it, and then come back when you're ready and uh, you can catch up with me. So let's get started. Exercise 31 now is essentially the same exercise as 30, two point measured cubes, perfect cubes, and with a 45 degree measuring point afterwards, right? And uh, then we're gonna create uh, multiple perfect cubes uh, to, to do that uh, as well, just like exercise 30. And of course, we're gonna be swinging our measuring points um, from our station point, uh, obviously up, and then even um, from the, the vertical vanishing point, or excuse me, from the uh, point of view of above the uh, eye level down to the horizon line. So that's the biggest uh, change. Okay, so here we go. First thing I wanna do is establish the front vertical uh, rise of the cube, and we're gonna do that uh, also with a measuring line. So let's put that down about right, oh, let's see, about right here. So I'm gonna thrust just a, a measuring line all the way across here, and then I'm gonna label it, and then I'm gonna pull in so we can see this better. All right, so I've got that across, and I'll come on in a little deeper now so you can see. And uh, we're going to have our measuring line here, and so, and then we'll raise up our vertical from that above the measuring line, but it's got a touch, so about right here seems good and uh, good enough, I suppose. So we'll, we'll, we'll raise up a, um, a vertical here, and that's arbitrary, meaning that's just determined by the artist, so I'll go about that high. Now I can project my depth back to, in this case, I'll just continue to use the left finishing point, and that's arbitrary for now. Um, and so I think I'll project it about right here, Looks pretty good, and so and I could do it in different configurations or different degrees if I wanted, but this seems good enough. So I'll project back, and there's my left vanishing point. We've done this a little bit now, so you should be start to get familiar. Left vanishing point, so I'll project both of these back to the LVP here, right? And of course the top. And uh, let's go ahead and get our right vanishing point in too, if we're doing that. So remember from, the left finishing point. Now we'll go back to the station point. So we'll draw a line back to the station point. Okay, let me pull out again so you can see that. Okay, from LVP all the way to the station point. And then from that line, remember we need 90 degrees coming out to the horizon line. Okay, so I get my trusty 45, 45, 90, set up my 90 here along that red line up to the station point and where they meet that angle meets right there up to the horizon line and that establishes our RVP or our right right vanishing point remember that's 90 degrees and I'll draw that in again down here from our station point which is us so remember we're looking out into the picture plane and these angles are coming at us 45, 45 to 90, really 90 degrees, okay. All right, so now we can establish our depth back to the right vanishing point. So we can now come on in, yep, and we can establish back to our right vanishing point to get that diminishment. So from the right vanishing point to the top of that line, I'll draw through a little bit. Actually, I'll draw all the way back because we're going to do multiple cubes there and there. So now we have our diminishment. Okay, so we have that. Now, remember, we need to recreate this measurement here 
bring it down along our flat measuring line here. Here's our measuring line across here. Now we need to bring that flat space. So what's the easiest way to transfer that? 45 degrees since that's half of 90. We can do that. We'll take our T-square and come up and just line up that angle. I've got it on my T-square here. You can see that. Yeah. And we'll just bring it down, swing it down all the way. And there we are. There's our measurement there. And we can do the other side. And you can measure it too, or you can swing your compass through. Either way is fine. Right in through there. So we're measured now with our cube right in through there. It seems pretty long. Double check it, but it uh, looks pretty accurate. Let's measure it just to prove ourselves. So I've got this is one and one, two, three sixteenths, and I've got one and one, two, three sixteenths. Yep, it always looks longer to me when it lays out vertical, but then it winds up being, I'm like, I always have to double prove myself. I want to make sure I don't um, do anything wrong for you guys. Okay, so now we are back to our swinging vanishing points. Remember that? So, and, we're, and our measuring points too as well. So let's pull out it again, a, a bit again so you can see it. Here we go here. There we go. That remote control can get testy. There it is. I want to bring this up a little bit so you can see it better. There we go. So, we're going to be swinging from the left vanishing point through the station point. Up, up, up. Swing it. Same, same length up to the horizon line for a measuring. And the easiest way to do that, since I don't have a big compass or a string and a pencil, I don't like that, I just measure it. So the idea is, is this, right? It's just swinging the same measurement up. And I have about, mm, just about nine inches. That's what I have. So I have nine. So I'm going to mark that down, demarcate that. And that's my left, left measuring point, LMP, for the left planes, or left plane. And I'll do the other side here. We'll swing that over. And I have here nine and a little bit, one sixteenth over a half. So that's, I believe that's nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine and nine sixteenths. And so we'll spring that back over. So nine and nine sixteenths. We'll put our point there. And that is for our right measuring point, our right plane. So I'll label that RMP right in through there. Okay, now we have our measuring points by, again, our swinging vanishing point. That distance now is the same as the distance from the right vanishing point to the station point. I swung it up here, left vanishing point to the station point, right, and I swung it back up there. That's kind of a review now. You should get it, be getting familiar with that. All right, so let's pull back in so we can do our work here. And so now we want to create... A measurement right along our perspective space. We've got flat space here for a cube, right? We transfer this measurement here. Now from this point, we want to go back to our left measuring point for our left plane of our of what will be our box across here. So in order to do that, line these up from the left measuring point through that mark there, where they touch this line right there, that's where the new perfect cube is measured from in perspective. Flat space here, flat space, perspective space, perspective space. Let's do the same thing on the right. So from the right measuring point to that point, ending point here, we line those up and then where it bisects our, our new perspective space right there. There's our two measurements where we project up our verticals. So let's do that now. It's really not hard once you get the hang of this and you're shown. You need to be shown it. You need, it needs to be passed on to from generation to generation, student, professor. Some of you will go on to be professors and, and professional artists first always and professors as well. And you'll hopefully pass this knowledge on. And we can continue this knowledge and to use it in your professional practice if and when you need it. Um, just because you're not using it does, doesn't mean you don't want to know it. So keep that in mind. So I'm going to darken this in. 
and you can see now we've got a perfect measured cube. That doesn't mean it's equal on both sides. It may be, since it's pulled over from our center of vision and raised up from our center, center point from here over, this could be a little longer than that. But it is a perfect cube on all sides in perspective. That's what's important. Now we don't need our measuring points anymore, but what we do need is to finish out the bottom and also the inside of our cube. So that's easy. We line up this right corner, back to the left vanishing point, and from the left corner to the, back to the right vanishing point, and there we go where they overlap, right there, bingo. We've got our the bottom plane of our box, and remember now, we are looking up at slightly, where our head's not tilted, but the box is raised above our eye. We're still in, we're still in two point, that's important to know. Now let's finish out the back here, same way, I'll overdraw a little bit there, and there, where they touch there, and that will line up with the front here, right there. A little off, but keep my pencil sharper, that'll help. If you're a little off, then you're probably, your pencil's a little thick, or I missed that little length running through there, it's no big deal. It's when you're, you know, like an eighth or three sixteenths or a quarter inch and you've got a perspective problem. But if you're just a little bit off, um, it's a matter of just lining up. You can get so tight with this that a 30 second off can be can be visually kind of irritating at times. We don't have to be that that anal with it. Okay, so we've got one of these. Now let's recreate several of these, correct? Let's do that like we've been doing before. So let me sharpen up my pencil will give you a chance to uh, catch up if you need to. I'll sharpen my blue pencil. And so just let me say that if you're going through all these perspective lessons from the very start, congratulations, it's fantastic. Um, but YouTube land especially. My, some of my students have to do this. Uh, and it's important. And you will be a stronger visual uh, conceiver of, or imaginator, if you will, uh, of of representational accurate space and you can do everything you anything you want later on with um, imagined space and abstraction and ambiguous space okay so let's find our 45 degree measuring point so through the front corner to the back corner that gives us our 45 back to the horizon line right here there's our 45 degree MP measuring point then from there remember we can come on out at the corners, right? So we'll hit that corner right here. Bingo. We'll hit this corner right here, right? There we go. So we can begin our journey. I'll put little arrows so we can see that out there. So we can begin our journey. Now we're going to meet a few more coming from the uh, vanishing points first. So let me do that. So from the RVP out project through that line, out through there from the left vanishing point, okay, now where they touch, right here, okay, that's that's a new bottom of a cube, and I'll overdraw so we can see that, all right, where else can they, are they touching, right there is another one, okay, look how they, met, they line up right in through there, so we can start to create some more areas, of course, where they touch. All right, so we've got that. So let's start to create now a few cubes. We'll create, let's see what I have in my notes. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's create six. Okay. So let's start on this side. You can see where we've already got one started right there in that corner. So we can bring from that corner touching up to that diminishment. Okay, and then I'll darken it in, bring it over here. Because look how fast this goes. You can see that as you're moving along, you're learning, you get faster and faster. You just do this more often and it starts to go at a blistering pace. And of course, you're not talking and teaching, and it can go even faster right through there and there. Okay, so we've got two. So let's create uh, another one. So we've got a touching point there we can help create back to here. If you get confused, try to find bisecting touching points. Remember, the 45 degree measuring point goes through each corner. There's the corner right there, so we'll come through. That creates another touching point. 
right there. Okay, then we'll come on up here. There we go. To create our third cube. Right there. And I'll darken it in. And then I'll darken it in there. We can do the inside. Maybe we'll do the insides. It might get a little confusing. But see how it's already starting to get a little longer at the bottom because we're getting what's happening. We're getting slightly further outside the cone. And then we get really far outside the cone. It starts to get more more densely distorted. So now we're gonna, let's create a couple over here going back this way, going back more to the left. So we have a touching point right here for a perfect 45. I'll bring that up, excuse me, um, yeah, for our measuring point right there. And I'll bring it up to that's its diminishment right there through here. You can see that line, it's a little lighter. And I'll darken that in right through there. There we go. So that creates four. Let me darken in the top here. It's a little bit slightly angled from the measuring point, which it can be right there. And then we'll go a little darker here. Okay, right in through there. All right, great. Let's create another one over here. Now I've got some ones that are already kind of squared out, but I haven't really drawn the inside of them. So let's create another one. So it's one, two, three, Four, let's create one more on the other side. Well, now we need a touching point over here. How do we get that? Well, we can get that from, here's a touching point here, through the right vanishing point through this line. That'll get us, a, that'll get us our touching point out there. So only, see that, only with really three, two to three uh, blue lines from our 45 degree measuring point, we've already got quite a good deal of configuration there. All right, so the, through that touching point right here, Okay, we can go back from the right vanishing point, align that out and through. There's our next touching point that we want right there. There's the underneath distance for that perfect cube. Then up to the diminishment or convergence line, if you will. And then we'll darken that in right in through there. There we go. And there is another one. And I'll just tighten up the bottom of this one, Get right through there, and also through there. And now we've got five. It looks like we've got more because these are these are a little bit lighter. Let me darken this, darken these three that we're seeing here, in there, and right through. There we go. So we've got now our five, and I'll darken this corner, and I'll do a little bit of shading so we see that. So we created, you know, these just like we did with our previous exercise, exercise 30. We're in 31 now. And we created five perfect measured cubes by creating a measured line and then bringing, swinging our measuring points up. And then creating multiples through our 45 degree measuring points. So let's shade out a little bit here. So I broke my pencil, of course. Got to happen in every lesson. That's that's who I am. I'm a pencil breaker. So if you have a heavy touch, I sympathize with you. So let me sharpen up my technical pencil here. You know, let's shade the bottom in the uh, right side of these a little bit. So we'll come around with the bottom here. So you can see that. So it's these one, two, three, four, and five. There's five cubes, not six. So here's our bottom, right in through there. Our perfectly measured cues. They don't necessarily look always equal, but they are. Okay. So how do we know that? Because we've measured them already. And this is what perspective does. And then we'll give a little bit of shading on this side, the right side here. I'll make it a little bit lighter than the bottom. And through here. And also through through here as well. And then if we want to throw a little shading in the background just to pop out the lighter plane, one, two, three step shading, right? We can shade a little bit out here. And that, that contrast brings that out even further. It's like it's in the sky, a little sky out there, whatever that is. Okay. All right, so there you go. So now we have exercise 31. We have a series of equally measured, uh, perfect 
cubes and we used a 45 degree measuring point to recreate multiples and of course you could keep going with that. Okay, so let's go on now to exercise 32 and we'll create a perfect measured scaled now also uh, flooring, scaling flooring so you get used to doing that with perfect measuring. Okay, on to exercise 32. Here we are at exercise 32. So now we're going to create a scaled and measured ground floor, okay? Uh, one inch is going to equal one foot and we're going to do a ground floor that's um, probably larger than, than what uh, I'll designate it as, but it will be eight feet by uh, eight feet ground floor. So eight inches by eight inches, but in perspective depth. So let's talk about how to do that. Well, we've already been doing it really the same techniques, but now we're just gonna do it formally. So I'm gonna put my, set up my fundamental four so we stay within the cone for now. So I'll measure up half of 18. I'll put it right in the middle, which is nine for my piece of paper. Whatever yours is, just make it half. So there's nine there, and then I'll come all the way across with my horizon line, my eye level, eye line. They're still the same because we're in two point, one and two point, okay? And then to find my center of vision and my center point, which is in the middle between the eye, uh, eye line and center of vision where they bisect, center point right there at 12, okay? And then we'll come on up from there to get our center of vision all the way through and then downward and I'm going to put the station point I have in my notes here that I'm looking at at seven inches down from the horizon line so we'll go now seven inches down from the center point or the horizon line and that will make our station point there seven inches down so I'll put a dot there and SP remember that's that's our two-dimensional us and we're flapped up here looking right on in. So let's set in our cone. Remember our cone is 30-30. So you've been doing this for so long now if you've been with me. Hopefully you've been on your own that you know this by memory, by heart. Alright, so there's 30 degrees there for our cone. And 30 degrees now on the other side which makes it 60. Right there, there, and there. There we go, right there, and then we'll put down with our compass and just show our cone. You don't have to draw all this out, but it really helps to reinforce memory, but also just to see it and help you stay within the cone because this, this can get distorted fairly quickly, and that's okay. If you like distortion, I love distortion. I think it's fun, and I like to show students and, and demonstrate distortion to students so they'll see the difference between uh, doing it on a piece of paper where we can actually draw the distortion because we can't really see it out in in life so much. Sadly, I would like to be able to see that, but I don't know if we could see distortion. Think about it. Would we be would we be able to turn off the distortion? And that might really confuse you. Think about going downstairs or something. You know, I wear bifocal glasses now, and that's <laughs> any, any of you people who wear bifocals out there. You know how hard it is to go downstairs sometimes. So I'm going to change my lead, my pencil. So if you're still trying to catch up, do so really quickly. I'm going to go get a new lead here since the other one's too short to work with. There we go. We're back on in and we're good to go. Okay, so we're going to create now, since we've got our setup, we're going to create a measured floor in perspective. And it's going to be equal equal scaling, if you could think of it as tiles. They could be tiles if you wanted, but they really could also be uh, uh, just um, scaling devices for measuring if you want to put figures or furniture or whatever you want in your uh, composition. Okay, so we need a measuring line and scaling on that. So remember, one inch is going to equal one foot. So if you're using the metric system, kind of, kind of reconcile that uh, on your own. So again, sorry about that. Anytime we use... Scaling. So I'm going to put our measuring line about right, right here across. So right there, I have in my notes. So I always make a pre-lesson, and then I take notes on it, and I have it off camera, so I can work from that to make sure that we are on uh, and together. Now, 
I'm going to start steadying the scale in. Let me come in a little closer so you can see it better. This is important. So when I start to set the corner of the room and scaling, I need to determine where that first tile sets in and touches this. So I'm going to put it about right here. So I'm going to put a little heavier dot right there. And that's where we're going to scale from in a moment. Okay. So what I want to do now is set in my diminishment for our tile. So we have there, I want to set in a, um, a, 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 comp, a my left and right vanishing point. That's what I'm trying to say. And let's do it this way. I'll show you something. Is You could do it a couple of different ways. Now I've shown you one way where you pick a side and then draw back to it and you've got the other one. Well, what happens if you don't necessarily want to do that? Well, you've already got the guides here and here. Remember, it's 90 degrees, 45, 45 on either side. 90 degrees coming at you from your station point out. So, if you line up this point right with your station point like I am here, you can turn it any way you want. As long as you connect it to the station point, it's got to be connected so you can turn it and, 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 and have it there. That gives you a full setup, okay, in terms of your vanishing point. So why don't we do that for this one? So I'm going to set it about right here to keep it in the camera nice. Maybe I'll tilt it just a little bit for effect. And so that means we have our left vanishing point here. I'll mark it. I'll put down LVP right there and I'll come back and remember it's at 90 degrees through the station point so I can line up that point to point here and then back over and that gives me right my right vanishing point RVP over here and then I'm just going to draw lines through it here and here so we see that we don't forget that idea that technique and of course it's 90 degrees coming out from our station point so that's another way to set that up. And if you're doing simple form, you can do that as well really quickly. Or if you're even sketching relaxed, which we haven't even gotten to yet, you can do that um, as well. So let's pull back in so we can see a little closer, which means now we have diminishment uh, from left and right guide, or not guides, but we have vanishing points. So let's do this. Let's just set in some diminishment already. So. The left vanishing point in now to the right vanishing point. That's our perspective space right there and there. Okay, there we go back. So that's the first set of what's going to be our floor coming out. And you can draw further out if you want to later on. Now, we need scaling. So let's take our trusty ruling guide. And I'm going to start here at zero. So that's zero there. That's my first setup. It touches the measuring line there. And so I'm going to make marks out. I'm going to go, I'm going to make seven or eight marks. Let's say zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight there. And of course, I'm off center a little bit. So I'll mark it at zero. That's one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight over here. And let's do the same thing now on the other side. Let's measure this out even further. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight out that way. Let me label these one, two, three four, five, six, seven, and eight out that way. So I may, I may be out the camera just a little bit, but you get the idea there. Now, okay, so we've got that, but we still need those swinging measuring points, right? So again, from the left finishing point through the station point, we're going to swing one up all the way. Okay, so let me pull out so you can see that. We want to make sure you can see everything. You can see my measuring gets a little bit more distant. And then, of course, from the right vanishing point, again, we'll swing that this, this distance. Here's the fulcrum. It stays exactly. We just swing that up. I wish I had a compass big enough to do that, make it really easy. But let's measure them, and that makes it really equal, too. All right, so from my left vanishing point, I measure through my station point, and I have nine and nine, no, nine and uh, uh, five eighths. One, two, three, four, five. So I have nine and five eighths. So I'm going to come out here. I'm going to make a mark 
at nine and one, two, three, four, five eighths right there. And that is going to be my left measuring point for my left planes right through here, LMP for left measuring point. And let's do the same thing now on the right. So my from the right vanishing point, I line up and just measuring that distance to so give me an accurate read on it. I have got 10 and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, sixteen. So I've got 10 and seven sixteenths, just a little bit less than half, right there, 10. Double check, seven sixteenths that you've got it right, right there. That gives me a little, little point there, and that gives me my right measuring point. RMP, right measuring point, right there. Okay, so now we're, now we're good to go. Now we've got some work to do. Okay, this gets a little bit more gets a little bit more tricky, uh, if you will. So let's pull in some. Now, remember before we've got some uh, measuring points to work with. So over here is where we're going to be demarcating, right? Marks over here. We're going back to the left measuring point to demarcate scale marks, or if you will, tile marks along this line. Let me show you how that works. So. From the one measurement, we'll go over to our left measuring point, not the right vanishing point, but the left measuring point here. And if I drew a line all the way across, that's what it looks like. Keep it light. Okay, you can see that enough. But here's where we're demarcating, where it touches that line along our tile line, our floor line, right there. So if I do two, I'll draw back one more time. I don't want to draw these all the way because it gets confusing later on. But there's another mark. And now if I shorthand that, I line them up. And I'll just make the mark right there. Same thing with four. I'll just make the mark right there. And of course, five. And you get the idea. And I'll keep on going until I get eight. So that's six, seven, and eight right there. Okay, so we have that. Now let's do the same thing. Let's make marks on the other side. So starting at one, we'll go now back to the right measuring point, and I'll do this one in blue so you can see it. So from one back to the right measuring point, I'll draw all the way through this one where they touch right there. That's the measurement that we want. From two, line up to my right measuring point. I'll make a mark here. From three, back to my right measuring point, I'll make a mark there. Four, to there. Five, you're getting the idea. This represents feet now. One inch equals one foot. Six, okay. Seven, right, and I'll have eight over here. There we go, right. They're right, just right at the cone, right in through there. So we have those demarcated. All right, now we have our measuring points used. Now we don't need them anymore. So let me sharpen up my pencil and let's start making a gridded floor that's scaled and perfectly measured. Since we have measuring here and here, it's like if we, like the cube we did, if we drew a line up, that would be one, it would have to be one inch up from that point to give us that one foot but we're not drawing cubes, we're just drawing a gridded floor. Really pretty easy if you think about it. So let's, let's start making grids now. So let's see how far I can come in. I want to cut off my vanishing points. Right there looks pretty good. Okay, so let's start here. Now we're working across this line now with our measurements. The, all of these will shoot right to the left vanishing point. Here, okay and left vanishing point there. We'll shoot back. These are all perfectly measured one foot marks in perspective there. That's what our measuring point gives us. And back to the left vanishing point. Look what that looks like. Very nice. Starting to come out nicely there. Left measuring points. Overdraw significantly so you get nice overlap later. There and also there. Okay. So that's eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's eight feet. Now let's do the same thing on the other side. Be careful. It's not from here. 
This helps scale for our measuring point to get these marks. It's these marks along this line that we want to drive now back to the right vanishing point. If you're going to screw up, you're probably going to mess up in one of those. And by the way, if you mess up, don't worry about it. Stop the video. Do another sheet. I've messed this up as a student. It's easy to mess up, especially when you're not talking like I am and you're doing your thing and then you forget and boom, all of a sudden, whoops, I'm going to have to start over. It happens. It's happened to me for sure. So don't worry about it. So we're going to start from here. There's our one mark. Back to our right vanishing point there. Overdraw a little bit. Then from two, back to our right vanishing point. I'll overdraw. And see how that's starting to work out nicely for us. And we just, you got the idea now. Just keep on going. Right here. And here we line up and just keep on going through all the way through there it's pretty easy it's pretty fun and it happens really fast the more you do I promise and you this is great scaling if you want to put figures down or whatnot or, or complex objects now you can overdraw I won't do it on this one we will later you can overdraw here and overdraw here to create more floor coming at you so but what you've what you've created you and I together let me darken this in here okay and here is an eight foot by eight foot floor and one inch equals one foot so that's an eight foot floor because we have eight inches of demarcation and a, a nice six foot figure could lay down very comfortably inside that how deep would that figure go? Well, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, if the feet were right here at this point, one, two, three, four, five, six, this would be the head. If the feet were here, or the head was here, this would be one, two, three, four, five, six. This is, would be the feet. So it's a very comfortable positioning. And of course, you could raise the height up too as well. Now, there you go. That was, wasn't too bad, was it? So that's a measured and accurate and equal eight foot by eight foot floor in perspective. Part of the trick of that is to keep that pencil nice and tight, nice and sharp, that pencil tip as I'm sharpening mine as I talk a little bit. Now I want to show you something. We can find a 45 degree measuring point. It'll come right through all of these. Every single one of these, if you line up your ruler nice and clean and tight don't break your pencil off like I do these will come through pretty pretty good running through let's see running through there there we go got it bingo right on through there with your 45 so there's our measuring point we don't even need it for that because we scaled it here right but you often you might want to use it later on for other devices so you can prove that to yourself by find any one of these you can we'll go back to that 45 degree measuring point so there you go eight foot by eight foot room just remember this that the scale was right one inch equals one in this case one foot or if you're doing the metric system it could be just one unit of however you want later on and later on these could be two feet so a figure if it was six foot tall would be two four six so you can play around with scale and then when you start drawing more complex objects to that later on you just obey your scale okay all right so the next exercise we'll do looks like exercise 33 we'll do this the same thing but we'll do it now with a ceiling looking up that's important too then we'll put the put all of it together in a room and then we'll start putting objects in more measured and scaled two point okay there you go. So that was exercise 32. Now we'll go onward and forward to 33. See you then. Bye-bye.